boss. Just take a little sip of this water. Easy now. Thanks, little brother. Yes. Is the doctor in? No. What do you expect? I don't expect him. Oh, Ma'am, my son's in that wagon. He's been badly hurt, and he needs immediate attention. I'd appreciate it if you can tell me where, when, and how I can see the doctor. The doctor can't help you, sir. He can't help anybody anymore. When the sun sets this evening, you can take my husband and hang him. Lord judged my husband a murderer. Ma'am, is there another doctor in town? No, none within 50 miles. I, 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 I don't want to impose on you, but my son's in great pain. Could bring him into your husband's office and, until I can decide what to do. No, you can't bring him in. Mrs. Johns needs a rest. Oh, Danny, of course. Bring him in. I'll do whatever's possible. I often assisted the doctor, and Danny served as his handyman. And between us, maybe we can ease his pain. Thank you. Is the dog in? The cross street. I'm going to get him. Look, as soon as you get horse into the house, right on back to the herd, huh? Well, we'd like to stick around and find out what's wrong. Oh, look. Do like Paul says. Don't fret over me. I'm going to be all right. You two would do anything to get out of a little work, wouldn't you? The house is right. Your worrying isn't going to help him or yourselves. Oh, now, wait a minute, Pa. Now, don't argue with me. Do as I say. Now, please believe me. It's better this way. You get him into the house, will you? Nothing in there that you want to see, mister. Dr. Johnson's in there, isn't he? That's right. Him and Sheriff Wells got the whole thing to themselves, and it's going to stay that way till this evening. I'm going to see the doctor. Now, hold on. They gave me two extra dollars to sit here and see that no one gets inside. Now, I'm going to earn them dollars. So now you back off. Try anything and you're dead. Sheriff, I come here for help. My son needs help. He jumped me, Sheriff. Let me have him. Hold it. Put your pistol on the desk. Come on. Now, what's this all about? Sheriff, all I want is a couple of minutes with the doctor. My son's been injured. Back outside, Hoff. Well, if you're willing to risk your life for a couple of minutes with a doctor, I guess you're entitled to it. Five minutes, no more. Back off. An arm's length from the bars. Uh, I have a trail herd bedded down about ten miles from here. Last night, my, my son got hurt. His horse stumbled and rolled on him. And I think he has some cracked ribs on one side. He's in awful pain. Why tell me this? You're a doctor. Not a doctor. A condemned murderer. They say I couldn't help your son, even if I wanted to. Well, uh, the sheriff would let you out for a couple of minutes. Just take a look at him. Wouldn't you? The doc is a condemned murderer. There's nothing I can do to change that. Well, who can change that? The only man has that power, Judge Grant. The Honorable Judge Grant. Judge Franklin Grant. Yes, he has the power. <laughs> the power of life or death. Where do I find him? Last house, north end of town. Just a minute. I haven't agreed to treat your son.
you get permission from Judge Grant, then we'll talk about it. Hold on. Don't hope for too much. You wouldn't like to try that trick again now, would you, mister? Yes? Judge Grant? That's right. What can I do for you? It's urgent that I talk with you, sir. Won't you come in? My door is always open to anyone in trouble. Thanks, sir. Mr. Um... Cartwright, Ben Cartwright. Yes. Won't you sit down, Mr. Cartwright? You, uh, you're not from around here, are you? No, sir, from Virginia City. Yeah, I thought so. I know most of the people in my district. Judge Grant, I, I just left my son at Dr. Johns's office. He's been injured. I need your permission to let the doctor examine him, treat him. That is out of the question. Well, it could be a matter of life or death, sir. Last week, Johns killed a man. He was tried and convicted. As a criminal, he has no rights or privileges. All I want is for the doctor to, to look after him. I, I, I don't know and I don't care about the, the interpretation of the law. But I do know and I do care. It's my job to know and care. Now, Judge, I'm not asking you to set the doctor free. I'm begging you to let him do what he can for my son. The answer is no. Judge, there's no other doctor within 50 miles of this place. You mean a, a, a horse fell on my son. His rib has been broken. I gave him something to make him sleep. How'd things turn out with you? Huh. Oh, I... I failed all the way around. I think your son has a serious internal injury. You said... You said you assisted your husband, didn't you? Why can't you do something for him? I don't know enough. I've done everything I can for him already. What kind of a man is that judge? Risk my son's life on a, on a point of law. The judge hates my husband. Hates him? Let me explain. My husband once treated the judge's wife. And in his opinion, she needed an immediate operation. The judge opposed it. But finally, because she was suffering so much, he gave in and it was too late. My husband's a fine doctor. But Mrs. Grant's infection was so far advanced, nobody could have saved her. She died on the operating table. The judge blamed my husband. Feeling this way. He sat in judgment on your husband? Yes. He condemned him to die, not for Stephen's death, but for his wife's. The right honorable Judge Franklin Grant is about to honor us with his presence. Come in, Your Honor. Come on, Danny, I'll get you some coffee. This is your only son? I have two others. And you have your wife? No. I have no children, no wife. 
Mr. Cartwright, do you know what it's like to be alone? To lie awake night after night trying to drive back the memories that flood your brain? And force yourself up each morning to face another empty, meaningless day? I've had such moments. Yes, I suppose you have. Do you know why I feel the way I do? Yes, I know. I'm not a cruel man, Mr. Cartwright. I'm not a callous man. But my wife would be alive today if John's hadn't... He's not a doctor, he's a butcher. That's why I don't want him to treat your son. But he is my son. And it's my decision as to whether Dr. John treats him or not. Yes, it is your decision. I only hope it's the right one. You come with me now, please. Sheriff, this is Mr. Ben Cartwright. Oh, we've met, Judge. Take the prisoner back to his office. Guard him until he attends to Mr. Cartwright's son. Then bring him back here immediately. Yes, sir. Off. He's to communicate with no one other than the people directly concerned with young Cartwright's condition. You heard him? Let him out. You heard the sheriff. Out. Deputy. All right, Hope. All right, Doctor. You said if I got the judge's permission, we'd talk. Let's talk. You are a very persuasive man, Mr. Cartwright. Either that or a very powerful one. I didn't think you'd be able to do it. I didn't. It was the judge's doing. Perhaps. Are you the Ben Cartwright of the Ponderosa? Yes, I'm the Ben Cartwright. Well, now, you are a powerful man. And you mean to see that your son gets every chance, don't you? Yes, I do. Now, please, can we get started? Well, you know, it must be a comforting feeling to have wealth and power. I wouldn't know. I've never had either one. You see, all my wife will have to remember me by is a stack of unpaid bills from grateful but forgetful patients. Now, that isn't much, is it, to leave to someone whom you've promised to love, cherish, and provide for. Uh, doctor, please get... Mr. Cartwright, if you want my services, you're going to have to pay for them. I never expected anything else. How much? $10,000. Regardless of the outcome. All right, now, please, can't we get started? The money is to be paid to my wife. And judge, you're witness to this verbal contract. For with your dedication and respect for the law, I'm sure that you'll see that Mr. Cartwright carries out his part of the agreement. Thirty-five years of my life have been given to that dedication and respect, and I've never abused the power entrusted to me. And what about you? What about the power entrusted to you? How many people have you butchered and maimed and killed and then hid your mistakes and incompetence behind the pr protection of your profession? Judge, please... You are a disgrace to that profession, Johns, and I'll tell you this. Of all the men I've ever sentenced to die, you're the only one I have the slightest regret or pity for. <laughs> Nothing's changed. Boss, I got the doctor coming. The sedative that I gave the patient's worn off. He's awake. He's in pain. I'm 
Dr. John. Hoff, back to the office. Well, they tell me you went and got yourself roughed up a little bit. Yeah. They tell you about the other fellow? No. Only that he outweighed you by a thousand pounds. I tell you. You tell me when it hurts, huh? ribs. The jagged end of one has probably punctured the lung. Meaning? Means your son will drown in his own blood unless the damage is repaired. <laughs> Are you sure? I mean, the lung could be all right. Yes, there's a possibility, yes. But I won't know unless I operate. It's a risk, a grave one. Do you think he's strong enough for an operation? I think so. He's got a good pulse. Of course, I'll check him over thoroughly first. says you need an operation. It'll be a tough one. How do you feel about it? He says I need an operation, Eric. I need an operation, Paul. Got a notion he knows more about it than we do. Besides, I'm getting sort of tired laying here on my, on my backside. I want this room cleared. The only assistance I'll need is that of my wife. I'll be out on the porch. You can wait in the study. Go on. Yeah. Don't you worry, on you here. I'll be out and see you in a little while. Yeah, sure. The one good thing about it, you big moose. The scar won't show. You'll still be as pretty as ever. That's right, comforting news. I was really sort of worried about that. gave me a chance. Upstairs, rest. I can manage here. No, you can't. You need me. I'm all right. Are you sure? I'm perfectly sure. We better get started, Doctor. Michael, I, I know it's not the time or place to say this, but... But I love you. So much. I love you. 
There's never a time or a place where it's wrong to say, I love you. Ether. Back on it again. After four long years. Used to be quite a drinker. But then four years ago, I... I come down with a fever. No doubt about it. I was due for Boot Hill. But then Dr. Johns heard about me. Came to my house. Didn't get five hours sleep all the time he was with me. Afterwards, he, he talked me into kicking the bottle. He gave me a job as his handyman. Doesn't sound like a man who could commit a murder. He ain't. I seen the whole thing. But the judge wouldn't listen. He said it was murder. You'll hang by the neck, he said. And the doc even refused to help himself. Refused to help himself? Well, it's... It's just that the doc is a spirited man. Not one to get pushed. But at the trial... He just didn't seem to care. What do you mean, didn't seem to care? Well, he just... Just sat there and let the judge condemn him. Danny. Danny. Tell me what happened the night Stevens was killed. I can do that, all right. I can't sleep for thinking about it. Whiskey's all that's... Whiskey's all that helps. I remember every minute of that night. I was on my way home the night of the killing. And like I said, I saw the whole thing. As I was passing the newspaper office, I could hear two men arguing inside. I couldn't tell what they were saying, but they sure was gone at it hot and heavy. I stopped and listened for a minute. It was about a bill he owed me. He wouldn't pay me. I seen the whole thing. There's nothing to worry about, Doc. But 
Better tell the sheriff what happened. What's going on here? I heard a shot. Sheriff, we got a dead man. It was an accident. An accident? Like what happened to my leg? He left it bent and twisted. I did everything I could for your leg. Yes, it's bent, but you're walking on it. You, you could have lost it. It's Stephen's own gun. It sure is. And I saw him pull it on Doc. It was self-defense, pure and simple. Is that true, Doc? Yes. Yes, we had a quarrel. And Stevens pulled his gun, and in, in the struggle for it, the gun went off. Well, with Danny here as a witness, you shouldn't have too much trouble. Why don't you go home now? I'll need you in the morning, though, to sign a report. All right, sure. Come on, Danny, let's go. Hold it. I wouldn't let the doc go home just like that, Sheriff. Not without seeing Judge Grant first. Well, what's Judge Grant got to do with it? Yeah, and it seems to me I'm still sheriff here. I say who goes home and who gets locked up. And I'm a deputy sworn to uphold the law. I say this man might be guilty of murder. Murder? It's a clear case. I didn't say it was murder. I said it might be murder. Especially in view of what I know. What do you mean, what you know? I know he threatened to kill Stevens. Sheriff, you say it was self-defense. Yes, sir. What proof have you got? The doctor's an honest man. Under the law, his evidence would be classified as self-serving. Danny Culp was there. He saw the whole thing. You'll swear to it. Mr. Culp is Dr. John's employee. That don't mean I'd lie. You have often said you credit the doctor with saving your life, hmm? He did. Yes, yes, perhaps, but the fact that you think so categorizes you as something less than a subjective witness. But I saw the whole... Enough. Johns, you say you went to Stephen's office about a bill he owed you? That's right. You quarreled about it and you killed him? Yes, we quarreled, but I didn't kill him. There are witnesses who say you wanted to kill Stephen. That's a lie. Half here says it isn't a lie. The other day I heard you and Stevens arguing outside the newspaper office. You said, I'll kill you, Stevens. Remember that. I'll kill you. And do you still deny this? I didn't deny we were quarreling. I told you. It was about that bill you owed. Did you threaten to kill him? I don't know. I was angry. I might have said anything. Well, perhaps you will have sharpened up your memory by the time your trial begins. Trial? Exactly, Sheriff Wall. Trial for first-degree murder. Meanwhile, he's to be held in jail without bail. I feel very sorry for you. For any man whose grief is such a sick thing. Please believe me, Judge. Your wife was doomed to die. All right, Doctor. Please believe me, your wife was doomed to die. And the judge was just the same at the trial. The cards were stacked. The doc didn't have a chance. The quarrel that started the fight. What was that about? Everyone claimed it was about an unpaid bill. Now, Danny... Does the doctor impress you as the kind of man who'd resort to violence to collect a bill? Oh, no. Matter of fact, half the people in town owed the doc. Then yeah. he didn't seem to mind before. There must have been something else to quote about then. But the doc kept saying it was the bill. He said it to me right after Stevens died. Yeah, so you said. What was that again about a piece of paper? Paper. Oh, he dumped a whole tray of type. He, he seemed in a sort of a daze, but he kept looking for something. Then he found that piece of paper. He tore it up and threw it in the stove. Well, anyway, it was a kind of a strange thing under the circumstances. Man killed, and Doc stops and tears up a piece of paper, throws it under the stove. How is he? 
Well, the lung was punctured. There was internal bleeding, and I repaired that damage and set the broken ribs. It's going to be all right. Well, I'll be better able to tell you. I mean, my wife should be able to predict his chances for you later on. I've done all I can. The rest is up to your son's constitution. Doc. Thank you. I hope you're not being premature. Oh, Mr. Cartwright, I wouldn't try to see your boy for a while. He's had a pretty rough time. The sheriff's impatient. Respects or complain about the doctor's bill? I talked to him. Oh, yes. He's allowed visitors an hour before the time. Hoff. Oh. oh, just a minute. Your gun. son had a very good doctor. But I didn't come here to talk about my son. Sheriff, may we talk privately? Hoff, will you get back outside? sacrificing your life. Not sacrificing, Mr. Cartwright. That's the wrong word. The law is taking my life for murder. Sacrificing is the right word. What does Cold Town, Pennsylvania mean to you? Well, the place where I grew up, as did my wife. And what else happened there? Nothing. We left there, came out here to open a practice. And why did Stevens, after all these years, want to print a story about Cold Town and your wife? I don't know what you're talking about. I think you do. save your son's life, Mr. Cartwright. I hope I succeeded. If you have any gratefulness, then forget about this. I can't. That same gratefulness won't let me. But it's, it's none of your business. I have to go to Judge Grant and show him this new evidence on your behalf. No! I'm going to tell you about it. And after. 
after I'm through, you're going to agree that I, I am doing the right thing. You're going to know that I'm making the right decision. I'm listening. In order to go to school and become a doctor, my wife Karen worked in one of the coal companies as a bookkeeper and a cashier to support us. And in my last year of school, why, she became ill, lung trouble. And all the money went for medical bills, and it became impossible for me to continue my studies. So, she embezzled money from the company where she worked. You knew about this? No, not at first. She told me she made a loan from the company. They started to audit the books, and then she told me. So you ran away, came here. And we started to save the money to repay the loan, and, and Stevens came out to start a paper. He knew about your wife? See, he was a reporter out of uh, Philadelphia when the theft was discovered, and he covered the story. Well, a, a possible jail sentence for, for Mrs. Johns. Surely that isn't worth your life. Have you ever been to Cold Town, Pennsylvania? Have you ever seen the coal dust hang so thick that it blots out the sun and breathe in that black death day after day? It kills people, Mr. Cartwright. And it would have killed her if we'd have stayed there, and it will kill her if she goes back. What about Karen? Don't you think she has a right to know what's happening and why? No. She'd do what you want. Go to Grant. Tell him. She's a beautiful woman, Mr. Cartwright. And out here, she'd have years of life ahead of her. But if you go to Grant, hand him that paper, you're sending Karen to her death. finished? All finished. How is he? We're still waiting. Did you see Michael? Yes, I, I thanked him for what he did. Mrs. Johns, are you going to see him now? No. It would make it more difficult for him. I'm going upstairs. If you need me for anything, please call. I will. Thank you. Or everything.
I just dropped by to see how your boy was getting on. Will he recover? We don't know. I'm sorry for you, Mr. Cartwright. Well, this will never happen again. I'm on my way to see to that. You're going to see the execution? Yes, it's my duty to be there. And if it weren't your duty, you'd still be there, wouldn't you? Yes, I would. Again, my sympathy. Vengeance hanging. What did you say? I said you're going to a vengeance hanging. Your vengeance. Because of the strain you're under, I'll excuse that remark. No, don't. I meant it. What was your real reason for coming here, Judge? I told you, Mr. Cartwright, my concern for your son. No. Justification. To justify what you're about to do out there. Because if my son dies, that would justify everything for you. That would prove that you were right. And you're not. And you know it. John's murdered a man. He admitted it. No. He admitted to fighting a man, not murdering him. There's no proof of that. What is this? A newspaper article. A story that Stevens was using to blackmail Dr. Johns. Blackmail? Yes, blackmail. When Johns tried to destroy it, Stevens pulled a gun. I don't believe it. Read that article. What you won't find in that story is that Karen Jones is ill. If she was sent back east, it might mean a death. How do you know all this? I learned it from Dr. Johns. He begged me not to say a word of this to you, for fear that you take out your vengeance on her, too. Then why do you tell me? Earlier today, you said that you never abused the power entrusted to you. Well, I think you're doing it now. You're sending a man to death because of what you think he did to you, to your wife, not because you really believe him to be guilty. You're a liar. Then prove me to be a liar. Thirty-five years of your life have been dedicated to seeing that men receive equal and fair justice under the law. Prove me to be a liar. Or better still, prove to me that you're a judge, not just a man using his power to seek revenge. Paul. You all right, son? Yeah, a little fuzzy. But a dang sight better than I did. A couple of days rest, and I'll be ready to go out there and take on that old flea bag that's set on me and give him a good whooping. You didn't know if your son would live or not. Johns might have caused his death, yet you defended him. My son had died. I'd still know that the doctor had done all he could for him, just as you know that he did all he could for your wife. He's only a human being, Judge. Nothing more. He can't play God. No one can. Oh. What's all that about? Oh, take it later, son. Everything's ready, sir. Just waiting on a word from you, Judge. Bring him down from there. Oh, just a minute, Judge. This man suffered enough already. I say if we're going to hang him, do it now. Don't drag it out. We're not going to hang him. He's innocent.
Dr. Johns. Now that I understand, I think I can use my office to see that you, both of you, need suffer no further anguish. Thank you. Well, now, I think we ought to be getting back to our patient, don't you? Mr. Cartwright. Thank you. Take a body to drive to Virginia City and back. Poor hurry, I promise. Very honest idea. Now, just one minute. Now, what are you so all fired busy about? Be busy, Paul. Well, did you bring the mail? Yes, sir. I'll turn the buckboard. Did that letter arrive from Carson City? Gee, I reckon, Paul. I didn't even look. It's just a little something I had up in the room. If you don't mind, Paul, I gotta be going. Wait a minute. You just got home? I gotta go see somebody, Paul. Hoss, may I remind you we're shorthanded? Your brothers are away. I'll be back. I I'll be right back. I'll be back. I'll be right back. Is it all right if a father knows where his son is headed, or is that too much to ask? No, sir. First of all, I'm going over to Tyree Place. Paul, he's a friend of mine. Yes, I He ain't always been like he is, Paul. I remember one time you said that. You said, I'm proud to have a man like Wade Tyree for a neighbor. Yes, that's true. And we all try to help him. And he's in love with a whiskey bottle. That little gal from back east having a tilt didn't marry that other fella. No, oh, Hoss. Is that an excuse for a grown man? Doesn't that prove he's a weakling? Paul, oh, Wade Tyree ain't a weakling. He was crazy about that little gal. We'll get back on the right road. Oh, and you're the good Samaritan who's going to help him out of the ditch. Poor him one time. You and me worked a half a day with a block and tackle pulling a maverick steer out of a ditch. I figure Wade Diary's at least as good as a maverick steer. Here. mighty leisurely for a man that's got so much to do. How come you ain't out working? I'm a drunk, Oz. Drunks don't have to work. It's empty and I'm still sober. Wade, I've been trying to tell you for months that booze and just ain't gonna get it. Oh. But you're wrong, Oz. It keeps everything nice and hazy and that's just the way I like it. Oh, come on. Probably find you another gal one of these days. Fall in love. Might even marry her. Yeah, I'll never make 
the same mistake again. Well, I can't hang around here all day. I just thought I'd drop by and see if you needed anything from town. What would I need in town? I guess maybe you can find me a greenhorn that I could sell this place to for a few dollars. Steve just came in. You want to go in and check it? No. Nah, I'm not likely to find that greenhorn. He won't buy me any booze, and everybody else knows I'm broke. I might buy you a drink. What? Yeah. Sure. I ain't gonna go in there with you looking like that. You need a shave. Come on. Oh. Well, yeah. all right, I guess I could shave for a drink. You said we were going to have a drink. Well, a minute. First, I got some business. Come on over and help me with it. Well, let's, let's have a drink first. We'll get it in a minute. Now, come on. And I brought a good friend of mine. This here is Wade Tyree. Say hello, Wade. Um, hello. Oh, here comes Mama. Hey, what's this all about, Hoss? Well, nothing to get excited about. It's just a lady and a little girl I met on the stagecoach this morning. Will Jeffries was supposed to pick them up here. Jeffries? What kind of a woman would want to meet that cold cat? Well, I don't know. She came all the way from Illinois now. She didn't she... Mr. Cartwright, I'm so glad to see you again. Hi, ma'am. I hope I wasn't too long. No, no. I've been resting in my room. The trip was more tiring than I'd realized. Didn't seem to get little Bonnie down too much. <laughs> Mr. Huss, is that a real Indian? He sure is. Come on over here and sit up. Oh, excuse me. Miss Hinton, uh, this is a good friend of mine. An old and dear friend, Wade Tyree. Wade, Miss Hinton. How do you do, Mr. Tyree? Hello, ma'am. Uh, Mr. Cartwright, didn't you find Mr. Uh, Jeffries? Uh, well, ma'am, Wade and me were just talking about Were you a friend of Will's, Mr. Tyree? Uh, me? No, ma'am. Uh, uh, you a relative of his? Well, to tell the truth, I came out from Illinois to, uh, to marry him. Mr. Tyree, do you... Uh, no, I was, uh, uh... Uh, Mr. Jeffries uh, ain't in town, ma'am. Uh, well, then, where is he? Uh, he... Well, well he, uh, he left town last week. Uh, uh, he, uh... Well, well he, he married a widow with money and moved to California. Mommy, how are we going to marry him if he moved to California? Hush, 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 Bobby. Uh, 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 Mr... Jeffries ain't a man to be trusted, man. Never was. But he wrote to me. I have his letters. Well, you see, I met him back in Illinois last year. We've been corresponding ever since. Well, I sold everything we had, sent him the money to buy us a little farm. What are we going to do? Uh, I, I don't know. Uh, uh, there's a stage leaving for back east tomorrow. I can't go back. Even if I had the money, I can't, or, or I won't. Well, if... Under the circumstances of... Mr. Tyree, I came from a small Midwestern town. Everybody knows everything about everybody else. Now, I won't go back there and be snickered at or... clucked over. Yeah, well, I, uh, I certainly understand, ma'am. I, I sure am sorry. Uh, uh, well, look, there's something i got to take care of. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll see you later. Uh, excuse me, please. Bonnie, you take real good care of your mommy. I'll be back in a minute, ma'am.
isn't any time to be boozing, Wade. Get away from me, you. Look, I know what you're trying to do, and forget it. Besides that, you promised me this drink. Yep, sure I did. If you wanted it. Well, I want it. No, you don't. Not when there's folks in trouble. Laid my folks. Hit me again, Sam. Well, you don't do it. Hit me again, Sam. Wait. Now, look, climb out of my hair, hoss, and let me get drunk all by myself. You can't afford it, Wade. Think about that poor little gal in there. Hoss, will you go away? I ain't no nursemaid. No. No, you ain't. You're a man, Wade. And you can't force a man to do something he don't want to do. Well, that's for sure. Well, there's something else for sure. Those folks have got to have a roof over their head. I'm going to take them out to Ponderoso. The least you could do is give me a little bit of help. Well, all right. Promise me you'll drop me by my place first. Like I told you, ma'am, a lot of nice families and big ranches have come from homesteads just like this one, right, Wade? Well, plenty of them fail, too. Well, not if they had the right folks working them. Oh, uh, hadn't you all get started? It's getting kind of late. Probably have one of the biggest, nicest places in this whole part of the country. I don't know whether it's what you had pictured in Illinois or not, but... Uh, Mr. Cartwright, I do hope you don't think I'm the sort of person who would just... Oh, no, ma'am, no, ma'am. I just thought that you might be a little disappointed or something. Uh, uh, it's getting kind of late. Yeah, I reckon we had Wade. We'll see you tonight at dinner. Wade's coming over to Ponderosa for dinner tonight. Oh, uh, uh, I got things to do, Hoss. I... Why, Wade? You mean you don't want to have dinner with Miss Abigail here and Bonnie? Oh, no, I didn't mean that. Uh, good. See you at 8 o'clock, Wade. Get up. Bye, Mr. Curry. Hey, Wade. Hinton, this is my Paul Ben Cartwright. Welcome, Mrs. Hinton. My son and I are very happy to have you both here. Well, I do hope this isn't an imposition, Mr. Cartwright. Your, uh, your son assured us it would... Hoss was perfectly right. Now, I know you've had a long journey. You must be exhausted. Would you like to rest before dinner? Well, yes, I am rather weary. I I'm afraid we both are. Why don't I show you up to your room? Oh, uh, Hoss, why don't you let Hobson do that? All right. This way, Missy. Fine. Thank you. Mm -hmm. What do you think of them, Paul? Hoss, ever since I can remember, you've been bringing home strays. Now, if it wasn't a motherless calf, it was a stray dog or a stray cat or a bird with a broken wing. Well, Paul, somebody's got to look after them. Yeah, somebody's got to look after them, and it always turns out to be you. Well, Paul, it's me only because I was the one that found them. I found them stranded in town this morning, right at the stage. They just fresh off of it. Will Jeffries is supposed to have met them there. Will Jeffries? That woman was coming here to meet that cheap gambler? Oh, Paul, she didn't know nothing about him. She didn't know what kind of man he was. Paul, it'll work out. It'll be all right, I yeah. promise you. Oh, I'm saying, I'm saying, a very special dinner tonight. And set places for five. Very special dinner. Five places. Yes, Mr. Hoss. Right. Wait a minute, Two Cartwrights and two Hintons. It makes four. Do you have a surprise waiting for me outside? Well, uh, as a matter of fact, Paul, I... I invited Wade Tyree to dinner tonight. You invited Wade Tyree? Thank you, Hobson. Now, just exactly what is that individual going to contribute to your little party? Now, wait a minute, Paul. Wade's sober today. Huh? And besides, uh, I think Miss Hinton might kind of like him. Oh, she's already met him. Yeah. And who was it that... Uh, Introduced them. You? Yeah, and they hit it off just like that, all three of them. Yeah, yeah. just like that. Huh? Yeah. 
And now my good Samaritan friend is going to have a nice little dinner party for them all here. Now you listen to me, horse. Mama's crying. You still want me to turn my back on him, Paul? You never tasted any ice cream as good as old Hop Seams, have you? This is scrumptious, Mr. Haas. We got a scrumptious cook. Not scrumptious, Mr. Haas. Chinese. <laughs> <laughs> uh, more ice cream, ma'am? Uh, no, I, I, I couldn't eat another bite. Thank you. What's the matter with your appetite, Wade? Uh, uh, that's all I want, thanks. Hey, Paul, you know, for a feller that's only been out here five years, old Wade has put together a pretty nice place, hadn't he? Nice herd? Yes, I, I, I believe you did mention that. Hey, hey Wade, you remember Jack Hastings' wedding? He married this little gal. She was a, a mail order bride. And, oh, excuse me, Paul. Anyhow, she cried all night the night of the dance. Remember, Wade? Never thought it'd work out. Fact is, right now they got one of the nicest places in the whole country. Five great big old healthy strong sons and a big herd of cattle are doing fine. I'm sorry. Excuse me. Oh, uh, Bonnie. Why don't you and I go out in the kitchen and see if Hopsing has any more of that scrumptious ice cream? All right, Mr. Cartwright. Wait. Not a word, not one single word. Just leave bad enough alone. There's a door over there, Wade. Why don't you go on out of it? Go as far as you like. Go all the way back to New Hampshire if you want to. But let me tell you something, mister. Everybody needs somebody. You can't blame me for remembering that with your bare hands, you cleared 160 acres. Built that house, the barn, the corral. That's all in the past. Means nothing. Then why didn't you clear out? Why didn't you go on back to New Hampshire when that little gal jilted you? What are you doing still sticking around here? Whiskey don't do its best unless you got a home to drink it in. That's what you want to do. If that's all you want to make out of your life, you go right ahead and do it. But you, first of all, go out there and tell that little gal that I made a real big bad mistake. You tell her that you ain't no good for her. You go tell her that. it is. The stars seem so close out here. I, uh, I want to apologize for the way Hoss has been talking me up. I'm sure he means well. Oh, yeah, Hoss is a good friend. Well, he hasn't, uh, he hasn't told you everything. Um, uh, well, the truth is, before you get any wrong impressions, well, for the past three months, I've been nothing but a common drunk. Mr. Tyree, you don't have to tell me all this. Yes, I do. Yeah. Well, uh, the point is that I'm no prize. And well, you see, my homestead, it's no mansion. It sure gets lonely. People can get lonely anywhere. I suppose Hoss told you about that girl I had back east that I had my heart set on. Supposed to join me out here. Well, I was wrong. 
Sort of makes us two of a kind, doesn't it? That's what I was thinking. Mr. Tyree. Exactly what are you trying to say to me? Well, uh, I've been thinking that uh, maybe you and your little girl and me. You mean marriage? Hmm. But I don't love you, Mr. Tyree. Right now, there's no love in my heart for anybody. Me neither. But you uh, can't go back. You've never seen the inside of my cabin. It's fixed up real pretty for a bride. I don't know what to say. That mail order bride Haas was talking about it at the dinner table is. Is that true? Yeah, it sure is. Out here in this country, we don't have time for courtship and such. I've seen a lot of those mail order weddings that have worked out pretty good. Yes, sir. And I learned every one of them from Hop Singh. Only Hop Singh do them all right way, not wrong way. <laughs> Let me show you another. Here, you take the handkerchief and you fold it over like a diaper. Uh, Mr. Cartwright? Yes, Wade. Well, uh, Abigail and me got something we'd like to tell you and Hoss. Uh, yes, we're, um, we're going to be married. That's great, Wade. Congratulations. Thank you. Son of a gun. Congratulations. Thank you, sir. Mr. Tari, are you going to be my daddy? Oh, it, uh, it sure looks that way, Bonnie. Hey, Wade, I've got something here for you. Well, I'll be doggone. Where'd you get this? I threw it away three months ago. I figured the time would come when you'd be needed again, so I've been hanging on to it for you. Oh, I don't know. It seems to take me forever. Well, we'll soon remedy that. Stand mm. right over there. Where's that husband of yours? Well, he went into town to cash the bank draft for our cattle. Yeah, he sold them, huh? Mm -hmm. The ones that got through the winter. Better than market prices, too. You sell them that Denver buyer he's telling me about? I don't know, Hoss. I'm afraid I'll never learn to chop wood. What's the matter, ma'am? You worried about making the change from a city gal to a farm wife? Oh, you're right. I am worried. Oh, Hoss, it's a hard country, and it, it's pretty lonely. Yeah, it is for everybody at first, though, Abigail. If a couple's nearly together, it's even more so. At first, you've got the discovery of each other. But after a time, you begin to look for sign something, a, a yardstick to measure your partnership by. For us, wait me, there's not much to show. We lost a lot of cattle, and we... No, oh, I don't know, the whole thing's a mess. Now listen here. Don't you start blaming yourself for hard water. I mean, Wade ain't made no complaints about you, has he? Oh, no. Oh, no. Us, Wade's a good man. He's, he's provided for Bonnie and me. It's just that it's taken a lot out of him. I can see that. You know what I think? What? I think you're just making worries for yourself. Maybe. But I can't forget something, Haas. Marrying me, for Wade, that was like a shotgun wedding, and no man likes that feeling, does he? I reckon not. 
You said he got better than market price for his cattle now. Mm -hmm. Everything can't be all bad then, can it? <laughs> Maybe you're right. Hoss, how would you like to have dinner with us and help us celebrate? Huh? I'd be right proud to, Miss Tyree, if you'll let me earn it. Gladly. Help us celebrate. Where's my bottle? Well, I put it away. Then get it, I want it. All right. Abigail said she thought you'd come home a rich man. Oh, shut up, Hoss. Here, give me that. Well, I reckon I'm entitled to that. It's my whole winter's pay, a bottle of rot gut. That Denver buyer gave it to me to seal the bargain. Something's wrong, Wade. What is it? Yeah. I gave away my cattle. That's what's wrong. I pulled them through the worst winter we've ever had, through blizzards and fighting wolves, and then I give them away. That Denver cattle buyer swindled you, huh? Well, there ain't enough money in the bank to cover that draft. Oh, Wade. Well, can you get the cattle back? I told you, they're gone. No, we can't get them back. Wait a minute. That's nonsense. All we got to do is get a judge and get some papers. Well, where do you think I've been all this time? That Denver buyer sold the cattle to somebody else and then skipped town. The judge says all I can do is sue him. But you know how long and how much money that'll take. Oh, way, way. Well, wait Hoss, it's... Miss Abigail, it ain't all that bad. Wait a minute. Wait, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll stake you again and, and I'll get Paul to give you some stock. I don't want your stock. You've done enough. In fact, this whole miserable thing is your fault. My fault? Yeah. If you'd left me alone that day and let me go on out and got dead drunk and flat broke, I might have hired out for $30 a month and found. No more homesteading. No more worries. Instead, thanks to you, I got a, a woman and a child that don't even want and can't even feed. That's about enough, Wade. He didn't mean that, Miss Abigail. I promise you, he didn't mean it. Sometimes when a feller gets cheated or chiseled, he, well, he, he just didn't mean it, that's all. Six months ago, you told me if I didn't give up drinking, I'd wind up with nothing. Well, I did quit drinking, and I still got nothing. Except a family I can't support. And that's exactly why you ain't gonna give up. You know it. Nothing I do turns out right. Look, Wade, ranching ain't the only way to make a living off of the land. If you planted a crop right now, you'd have it ready for harvest by fall. What kind of crop? Vegetables. Vegetables? What kind of vegetables? Any kind of vegetables, sweet corn, potatoes, tomatoes, lettuce, cabbage, anything that you that you could sell to the restaurants in town. Look, look, Wade. I'll buy the seed for you. And I'll help you plant it. Wade, you can't give up now. Mm -hmm. Guess I do owe Bonnie and Abigail something. All right, horse, I'll take your help. Nothing else I can do. Hey, 
Paul. Mm. Need some help? Where have you been? I've been back over to Priory's place. Again? Quick away, I'm not Let her down. Boss? How long is this going to go on? First you give them the seed and then you plant the crop. How long is this going to go on? Paul, you yourself told me that a neighbor was supposed to help a neighbor. That's right. What are you going to do? You're going to harvest the crop for him too and then sell the crop for him? Already have, Paul. I talked to Silver Dollar Restaurant in town to contract in all of his fresh produce. And, Paul, I promised him I'd have him harvest it. I can't just let him down. There's going to be any harvest. Oh, he's got a good crop, Paul. Horse. We haven't had a drop of rain hereabouts in over a month. Doesn't look as if we're going to have any. I've seen dry spells before. They can be pretty disastrous. Yeah. It'll rain. It's gotta. brought you some water. Here, take some. You? No. Oh, it's so hot, dry. It's the worst summer I've ever seen. Isn't there a chance of rain? Look at that sky. There's not a rain cloud up there. Just that sun beating down day after day. I don't think it'll ever rain again. Hoss Cartwright says... I don't care what Hoss says. Crops die without water. Well, there's nothing else I can do here. Let's go back to the house. Rain decided we'd do a little irrigating. Well, too late, Hoss. It won't work. I ain't got time to argue with you, Wade. Will you tell him, Abigail? Wade, we can't let the crops die. Come on. Give me a hand, please. Here we go. We'll be out in the cornfield if you change your mind, Wade. Get up. Get up. Get up. Get up.
Good. Abigail, why don't you slow down a little bit? You're pushing yourself way too hard. I can't, Hoss. Well, that's the end of it. I reckon I'll have to ride back to Ponderosa and get some more. And then what? You know as well as I do, Hoss, it'll take a rain to save this crop. Now, you listen to me. Mama, mama! Mama, please! Mama! Mama, please! Please! I'll take her to the wagon. No, don't touch her! Stay away, don't touch her! You don't want us, you hate us! You hate us and I hate you! Come on, honey. Take Miss Abigail and back to the house, I'll go get the doctor. Doctor's in there looking at her now. He told me to wait out here. How's Bonnie? She's asleep now. I covered her up. Look, Wade. You're dead on your feet. Won't you get some rest? You're gonna need it for tomorrow's work. I'll get the water over here first thing in the morning. What for? I don't care anything about that crop now. Don't you talk like that. That gummit you got. You got me. You got anything I got. Money in my two hands. You know you can depend on me. father. I gave everything I had to this place and gave them nothing. When that Bonnie, she hates me. That child just hates me. That ain't so. She didn't mean what she said. She just wrought up. A little young and was dog tired. Well, Doc? Your wife needs rest, Tyree, but she's in no danger. Well, what seems to be ailing her? Working out the sun too long? That didn't help any. Anyway, you can go see her now. Thanks, Doc. Look, <clears throat> Doc, is there anything I can do? Well, I doubt if Mrs. Tyree will get the rest she needs here. Not with that little girl to take care of. Well, yeah, I could take them out to Ponderosa. At least you wouldn't have to do any housework or cooking out there. It's certainly advisable, Hoss. I'll see you. Bye. It was quite a scare. I'm sorry. He's uh, got all worn out. Poor baby. You know, Abigail, uh, this is no place for a young kid. Truth is, I've been thinking. Wade. Huh? I'm going to have a child.
company all bedded down for the night? Here. Yeah. Little one's sound asleep. She's all tuckered out. Mm. What about Abigail? Setting up feeling better. Wants to talk to Wade. Oh. You know where he is? Mm. By the barn. What about his crop? Oh, I think... I think we could probably save enough of it that he could scrape by, maybe. Mm. Well... You know, we'd all be happy to pitch in. But, uh... It's his decision. Yeah, I know. But it seems like that... I think... Remember what I said. Hoss, Wade. Abigail wants to talk to you. Oh, good. Now, look, I, uh... I want you to come along with me and hear what I got to tell her. What are you going to tell her? Well, uh, never mind. Just come on along, will you? Are you feeling any better? Uh, Abigail, I got something I want to tell you. I've got something I want to tell you. Well, let me finish. I want to tell you this while I get it all straight in my mind. I want Hoss to hear it, too. Abigail, uh, well, you uh, married the wrong man. It's simple as that. Like I was telling Hoss, I, I've been a poor husband and the worst father. And I don't blame Bonnie at all for hate me. Oh, now, come on, Wade. You know she didn't mean that. That little gal doesn't hate you. Oh, she hates me. She hates me. I, I'll never want her trust again. Sure you will. You never lost it. Did he, Abigail? What else have you got to tell me, Wade? Well, I, uh... I know what I'm licked. Uh, call it quits. But, Wade... Wade... What about your wife and, and little Bonnie? I'm gonna send them back to Illinois. Well, if that ain't the dangest fool thing I ever heard of in my life. I've got my mind made up. But I'll, uh, I'll still need your help, Hoss. What kind of help? I need to loan us some money to get them back there and keep them going until I can pay for their support. You figure that's the right thing to do? I mean, with a new little one coming on and all, right? Do I get the money or don't I? If that's the way you want it. Well, that's the only way. They can, they can go as soon as Abigail feels like she's strong enough to travel. Well, I'll have no part of it. I'm going to wake up Bonnie and we're going home. Home? What do you mean? The house? What other home do we have? Well, Abigail, there's nothing there. Crops are dying, there's no cattle, there's nothing. Oh, Wade, all your hopes and dreams, they're there. Well, that homestead's as much mine now as it is yours. If you choose to, to leave, then go. But I'm not quitting, I'm staying. I'll get Bonnie. That's a way to talk, Abigail. I'll be out there to help you all I can, too. Oh, no, you won't, Hoss Cartwright. I don't want another favor from you ever. Do you understand? Abigail, what are you talking about? I think you know what I'm talking about. You've cut my husband down to nothing with your interference, forcing your help on him. Forcing it? Yes, I said forcing it. Well, just remember this, Hoss Cartwright. You're not going to do that to Wade Tyree's wife and children. We're going to make that homestead work. Well, Wade built that house with his own two hands. He, he cleared and plowed our land without your help, and I I guess we can do it, too. Abigail, Wait I... Wait a minute, you let my wife talk. Yes. He's no doormat for anybody. He can stand on his own two feet. He doesn't need you or, or anybody else to, to, to prop him up. You're doggone right. All I need is my wife and family. And another thing, Hoss Cartwright, you... What did you say? I said, all I need is my wife and family. Oh, Wade, Bonnie loves you. All she needs is for you to let her know that you love her. Go upstairs and wake her up and we'll go home.
What's the matter, son? People. I just don't understand them. Confusing. Strange thing about people. They wouldn't be much fun any other way. <laughs> Rain's coming. I have nothing to do with it. I ain't responsible for this. Step down. <coughs> you have heard the evidence, gentlemen of the jury. You will weigh that evidence in privacy and render your verdict. A sober and unenviable task, but you must face it with responsibility. men into their little hate closet. That's right. Send them in there so they don't have to look at me when they tie that rope around my neck. Man. Weigh the evidence, huh? Seems to me around here lies weigh up heavier than facts. And you, you gaping bunch of sheep. Like a medicine show, ain't it? That's right. Step right up and get your tickets. See a man do a rope dance. See him kick, see Man. him squirm. Man, stop it! And don't forget your box lunches. Not doing yourself any good. Ooh, it's mighty hot, gents. Mighty hot. Well, I guess it's best to get this over and done with. I got chores waiting at home. We all got things to do. Right. Well, let's get to voting. I think all of us see this the same way, don't we? Murdoch? What else? Guilty, of course. Murdoch said it. What else? He's guilty. Yeah. Uh, I mean, guilty. I had a field of wheat once and I had to plow it under. Bad seed, bad crop. Sometimes people are the same. You know, Ren's paw was no good, town drunkard. His kids following his footsteps. I vote to hang him. Guilty. Good, good. Barton? He done it all right. Guilty. And now, will it? Oh, you look disturbed. Don't tell me. Yes, Mr. Breeze, I am disturbed. Disturbed by this talk of getting out of here because it's hot or because there are chores waiting. Like all the rest of you, I feel that Jamie Wren is guilty, and I'll vote that way. But I want it known that it's because of the logic of what I heard in the courtroom, not because I'm all fired anxious to get this over with. Oh, of course, Williams. The point is, we all think he's guilty. What's the use of dilly-dallying around? Oh, one more vote, and we'll have this behind us. Just give us your guilty. We've had enough oratory. I ain't much on oratory, Mr. Breeze. Just remembering what the judge told us. He called it reasonable doubt. I reckon that's what I got. Are you going to tell me, Hoss, that you doubt Jamie Wren's guilt? Yes, sir. I guess that's exactly what I mean. I got a vote not guilty. Some more, eh, hey, Junior? 
Oh, pal, you turned out to be. I, I know I wasn't in court, Jamie, but I was right out here all day waiting. How did it go? Are you going to be... I mean, did they... Set me up for hanging? No, not yet, but they'll get around to it for sure. Seems there's a squeamish chap on the jury, and hanging don't set too well with him. The one friend you got in this world, and you can't say a good word for him. Junior's the only friend I got. That guy in the jury ain't any friend of mine. The only reason he's holding out for so long is for the buck a day he gets for sitting on his duff. Let's get you back to your cell. You can talk to him later, Junior. Yeah. That's right, you can. Why don't you come by later, Junior? We'll have us a regular old tea party, huh? How about that? Let's go. How'd it go, son? Not so good, Paul. Horse oh, Cartwright. Have you taken leave of your senses, wanting to turn a killer loose in the streets? If I thought Jamie Rand was guilty, I'd have voted that way. Seems to me somebody's been talking out of turn. What goes on in the jury room is not subject for gossip. You can't keep such disgraceful goings-on a secret in this town. Horst Cartwright, I've known you a long time. But I must say you're a real disappointment to me. Come, Henry. You know, Hush, she's right. Everybody in town feels the same way. Maybe that'll make you change your mind. Mr. Murdoch, it's how I feel that matters to me. Well, now, let me put it this way. I don't intend to stay cooped up in that jury room sweat box because of your muley attitude. Let's be heading home, sir. Horse. Horse Cartwright. I hear tell you holding out, horse. Holding that Jamie Wren ought to be let off. That's true, Mr. Olson. But we ain't supposed to be talking about it out here. The judge said it was supposed Don't to... figure how you can really feel that way, horse. Jamie Wren did what I said he did in court, and that's plain fact. Well, sir, I tell you, Mr. Olson, I, I did what I thought was right, and that's plain fact. I'll hold you no grudge for that, horse. A man can only vote what he thinks is right. But... Oh, you've remained silent through this whole thing. Badge man. <laughs> this pocket a mean profit from the money they give you to feed us prisoners. Huh? Look, Grand. Most jails you want your grub, they make you cook it. Now this is Russian food. Same identical as they serve their customers. Oh, I do believe you. I do for a fact. Difference is you probably scraped off the place they sold yesterday. Law says I got to feed you. You don't have to eat it. Well, I'll try and choke some down, badge man. Otherwise, I might just pine away and die of starvation, and you'd be cheated out of your hanging fee. That'd be plumb terrible, wouldn't it? You'd be cheated out of your hanging fee. What I don't like about it is all the rules are always setting down for me. What rules? Oh. Well, Breeze and the rest of them are always, they're always telling me that the, the law says an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. How come you don't say nothing about turning the other cheek or loving thy neighbor? What are you getting at, Ellis? Well, Paul, Dad Bernie, poor little Jamie Rand would have a better chance if he's a total stranger. Uh, Dad Bernie, I just, I just can't see him killing a man in cold blood, that's all. Ellis, you've got to be careful about something. You've got to be careful not to let your heart through your head. The man who sits on a jury, he's got to be logical. He's got to look at the evidence, got to weigh the evidence. Paul, that's exactly what I'm doing. The only evidence I have heard, the only evidence, is Olson's word that Jamie Wren killed his brother. Are you saying that Olson lied? No, I ain't saying that. But what I am saying is that it was dark that night, Paul. It was real dark. It would have been real easy for Olsen to have made a mistake. Too easy to hang a man on the strength of it. 
Answer me this. Am I wrong in what I'm doing? Man is never wrong. Doing what he thinks is right. You better get saddled up. You're gonna be late for jury duty. I just soon grasp my bear. Oh, Oz. You know you're gonna take a real beating from those other jurors today. No chance of you changing your mind, I suppose. Mr. Williams, I can't understand. Everybody expects me to change my mind. Has it ever occurred to any of them that they might change theirs? I'm telling you, Judge, dismiss this jury and start over again. That newly cart the only man in town thinks... Mr. Murdoch, get one thing straight. No one tells me how to run my court. You'll go into that jury room and you'll return with a unanimous verdict, whether it takes today, tomorrow, or the rest of the month. Do I make myself clear? Well, now, let me make myself clear, Judge. I got a ranch to run. I can't waste all this time. You call it a waste of time deciding whether a young man should die? No, I don't mean that, Judge. What I mean is the rest of us jurors has decided like we were supposed to. And that fool Cartwright's holding us up. Everybody's here now. Let's get going. Yeah, sure. Oh, Mr. Brees. It's come to my attention that certain jury members have been discussing the deliberations of the jury with outsiders. That is something I will not tolerate. Yes, sir. Well, now, Hoss, how about it? Changed your mind yet? Oh, surely you want to get this thing over with. Getting this thing over with is not exactly my notion of our purpose in being here, Mr. Breeze. Now, we all know why we're here. To find Jamie Rangeli. Yeah, but don't you see, I still think he's innocent. Now, Hoss, we can't stay here day after day. Why don't you get off your high horse and swing over to our side? Because he likes to hear himself talk, that's why. Hold on, Murdoch. I don't agree with Hoss, but he's got as much right to his opinion as the rest of us. Opinion? Oh, come on, Hoss, be reasonable. And none of us here like this job any better than you do. The law says we gotta do it. You think I want to see that young man hang? Well, I don't. I don't make the laws. I just do the best I can. Now, Hoss, we're gonna try to convince you of Wren's guilt. I want to appeal to your logic. Now, if you remember, when Olson was on the stand, under oath, he had no hesitation in making a positive identification of Wren as the man who killed his brother. Judge Crane, has the jury come to a verdict? Or is that horse Cartwright still acting like an obstinate donkey? Mrs. Taylor, I must remind you that what goes on in that jury room is not your business. Nor is it mine. To answer your question, the jury is still in session. Good morning, ma'am. Ladies. I heard him say reasonable doubt, and I got a reasonable doubt about it. What is the doubt you had? All day we've been arguing with that pig-headed fool. All day. We've got to do it again tomorrow. I tell you, I'm getting fed up. Well, Cartwright must be a stubborn one, all right. He is. Why is he again stringing up that young killer? Well, Taylor, he... Howdy, Hoss. Howdy, Mr. Olson. Word's out that you're still wanting to turn Ren loose. I'm sorry, Mr. Olson. Yeah, I'm sorry, too, Hoss. I'm sorry about that young Ren boy. I hate to see a man die. 
That's what he did kill my brother, and the law says he... Mr. Olson. Please, Mr. Olson. I'm sorry. You know, Mr. Olson, us jurors ain't allowed to talk. Seems like uh, some of us don't want to talk. But you can, Mr. Olson. You can. Now, come on, Mr. Olson. Tell us again, just like you did in court, how Jamie Wren killed your brother. I don't see how it could do any good, Mr. Murdoch. But I wasn't there, Mr. Olson. I didn't hear it. Go ahead and tell us. Well, there ain't not much to tell. It's, it's just that... My brother and I woke up that night in our cabin and we saw Jamie Wren stealing our money box from the fireplace where we hid it. We jumped him, but he had a gun. He shot my brother and, and run off with the money box. Every cent we had in the world. Yes, sir, that's just how he told it in court, under oath. But it appears some of us weren't listening real good. Mr. Murdoch. Jamie Wren has already had a fair trial. We're not going to hold a kangaroo court in here. You got a guilty conscience or something, Haas? I ain't holding no court. Just refreshing my memory on what happened. Cal. This bill. It's got my mark on it. It's part of the money Jamie, Jamie Wren stole the night he killed my, killed my brother. and you say all your money was marked like this. Yes, the sheriff, it was. And Jamie Wren stole every cent of it, right? That just about decides it, don't it, Judge? You got no choice but to call a mistrial. There's no need to declare a mistrial. The jury will reconvene in the morning. I'll hear no more talk on the subject. Oh, so you're just gonna have to figure out where you might have picked up that money. That bright Roy, I've been trying. Backtrack myself. I paid a bill over at the livery stable, and I... Bought some stuff from Jake and a couple other things. I don't know. I must have got it back in change or something. I don't know. You had another thought, Mr. Olson? Well, it was real late that night when I saw Ren rob us and shoot my brother. I run over to the sheriff and got him out of bed, and it was, he grabbed Ren before morning. But then Jamie couldn't have spent any of that money. It had to be a bribe. Murdoch, that ain't so, and you know it. Listen, Huss, you vote guilty like the rest of us. Then maybe nobody can say you took a bribe. I better not hear anybody say that no how. Hoss, it's been a long day. Come on, let's get out of here. Good night, boys. Well, go on in. Hey, yes, sir. Don't take too long now, you hear? No, sir. They, they've been doing a pop a lot of squabbling down in that jury room, Jim. I've been listening to them from out in the alley. It's just a night, pal. No, 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 it ain't, Jamie. No, it ain't. That that, that big fella, uh, Hoss Cartwright, uh, he's been taking a heap of abuse and lip from them other jurors. You can stand it. The dollar a day he's getting, he'll give in when he's made his money and had his fun. If he does, they'll... That's right, Junior. They'll string me up, and they'll waste no time about it either. Look, quit trying to save my feelings, will you? Because I ain't afraid... I ain't afraid of them. They get no satisfaction out of me. No crawling, no whining, no nothing. And for something you never done. It just ain't fair, Jamie. It just ain't fair. There ain't nothing fair in this world. You're either born lucky or you're born to spit on. The way I look at it, Jamie, you only got one chance. You, you got to get out of here. <laughs> well, why didn't I think of that, Junior? You know, I think I'll just call that deputy over here and ask him to unlock this cell. Please, Jamie, you've been the only friend I, I ever had. I'm going to get you out of here. Why, brother? How come? Clay. What do you?
you gonna do? Shape up an Indian totem and get rid of the evil spirit? Oh, no, 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 Jamie, no. I'm not gonna make an Indian totem. I figured, I figured if I could get the key... I'll get him over here. Say, uh, deputy, you mind stepping over here for a second? Thanks for dropping by, Junior. Thanks a lot. See you later, huh? Now what, Ren? Uh, tell me, uh, can a prisoner make a complaint around this here jail? What do you mean, complaint? Here's what I said. There are a few things I don't like around here. First of all, the food. It stinks. And there's that other thing there. What are you getting at? <laughs> I said you did. I, I just won't talk to you a minute, that's all. You know who I am? Who, who don't know that? Your horse caught right. The one that's been holding out. And Jamie says you're just doing it for the dollar day you get. Now, Jimmy's wrong. Now, I know you're a good friend of Jimmy's, and that's why I want to talk to you. I want to talk to you about that money that was stolen from old Olson. Some of it was found in my pocket tonight. Huh? You wouldn't know anything about that, would you? Hey, now, you... You ain't accusing me. Ain't nobody accusing you of nothing. Just some of the fellas are talking like maybe Jamie might have given you some of that money to keep for him. Oh, so, so Jamie's right, ain't he? You, you, you don't think he's innocent. Well, well, let me tell you something. He couldn't have given me that money because he didn't steal it, and he didn't shoot old man Olsen, neither. Boy, how can you be sure of that? Let me tell you something. It's the gospel truth. I told Jimmy I'd lie for him. I, I, I said that I'd, I'd, I was with him the, the night of the killing, give him an alibi. But he wouldn't let me, not Jamie. He said that he was innocent and, and he didn't need no lies to prove it. Maybe, maybe you wouldn't understand that. Yes, I do. I got gold. You're right, Taylor. Them Cartwrights. Them high and mighty Cartwrights. Listen, you boys spread this story real good. Tell everybody Cartwright had some of that stolen money on him. Spread it real thick, you hear? We'll see to it, all right. I want to get to bed. Just standing around fretting isn't going to do any good. I don't think anything's going to do any good, Paul. Oh, I wish old Roy could find some more of that stolen money. Well, maybe he will. Meanwhile, go on up to bed. You need the rest. Tomorrow's not going to be an easy day for you. Ain't none of them been very easy lately. Well, it's going to get rougher. sort of a mess have you gotten yourself into? What's the matter with you? What sort of a mess have you gotten yourself into? And what are you doing here? Where's Joe? He's back in Carson City with the stock. Cattle buyer sent word he wouldn't be there to Monday, so we flipped the coin to see you'd come home for a couple of days, and it looks like I lost. Well, what a reception I got in Virginia City, thanks to you. Well, you got stuck in your crawl. What happened to your hand? I had to fatten a couple of faces because of you. What'd this happen? Down the Sazerac. Wasn't my seeking. A couple of guys were shooting their mouths off about how you were taking a bribe to get Jamie Wren off. And they kept it up until I had to plow into him. Well, that ain't the half of it. I know. Sheriff Coffey told me the rest of it. Seems that uh, Bud Murdoch and his friends have got the whole town suspicious of you. I don't understand that fellow Murdoch. He wants to hang Jamie Wren so bad he can taste it. Always figured him for a pretty decent feller. Well... Sometimes even pretty decent fellas are too much in a hurry. 
I'm going to bet I suggest you two do the same. Tell me something, Pa. How do you feel about Jamie Wren? You think he's guilty? Well, I'm not going to discuss it in front of a member of the jury. Good night. I never figured anything had come up me and Paul couldn't discuss. I reckon the law changed all that. Oh, now don't get him wrong. He's not feeling bad because of the family name or anything like that. It's because of you. He knows you're in a heck of a spot, and he also knows that you got to make up your own mind. Well, listen, since you got me this, how about give me a hand with my horse, huh? Yeah. The big, brave badge man. Yes, sir. You got that badge shining like a new mirror, huh? Well, you got no rope, so I guess it ain't hanging time yet, huh? Bet you can hardly wait. The jury's still out, son. You know I can't figure you out. I can't understand you at all. I've tried to treat you fair. Fair? You called throwing me in this cage for something I didn't do, then hanging around like a hungry vulture waiting for the happy okay to string me up fair? me for days. Now, the time's come for me to do a little yammering. I told you I wasn't much on oratory. But I think the time has come for me to speak my piece, and by gum, you're going to listen to me. That's right, Cartwright. You talk. You talk. I'll listen. I sure will. Tell us how Jamie Wren got to you with his stolen blood money. That's the way the guilty ones always act. All they know is violence. Now, enough of this. Sit down. You too, will Cartwright. Like I was saying, it's a young feller, Jamie Wren, namely, sitting over there in the jail all alone. Sitting there wondering when somebody's going to come and get him. There can't be no fear like the fear he knows. Fear of being taken out and put under a hanging tree. His hands tied behind him and a rope around his neck. That's part of the punishment, Huss. If he's guilty, Mr. Breeze, if he's guilty, but what if he ain't? What if he ain't guilty? Then you're guilty of murder, ain't you? But they ain't gonna put you in that jail, none of you. They ain't gonna tie your hands behind your back and take you out and put you under a tree and put a rope around your neck, are they? Huh? There's a lot of ifs, Hoss. None of us here have any doubt. Any doubt at all. Jamie Wren is a killer. Ain't there, Mr. Breeze? Ain't there no doubt? Is that true, Mr. Breeze, or is it just that all of you's got, a, got it in your head to hang Jamie Wren? And there just ain't no, there ain't no room left in your heart for any doubt. The law's a mighty peculiar thing. It's all black or white. Yes or no, there ain't no in-betweens. It appears to me that you fellers have been hanging a lot in the black. While I've been dwelling in the in-betweens. You can't half hang a man. That's right. That's right, Mr. Breeze, you can't. Well, I'm going over to the restaurant for my supper, son. I'll bring yours back with me. Just don't stuff yourself, Badge Matter. There won't be any scraps left for me. All right. Jamie. 
Jamie? Psst, Jamie. And, and I got two horses out in the alleyway. Hey, horse, you still in town? Yeah, hi, Roy. Hey, Roy. You run on any more of that stolen money? No, I ain't. I checked every store in this town. You know, Horse, it does seem likely that if somebody else stole that money like you think, that they'd be more of it around. Yeah, it does. Uh, See you in the morning. Yeah, good night, Roy. that stolen money. Admit you killed poor Olson. Hold it down, murder. You hear? Oh, hold it down. I'll take over now. You tried to escape, huh? You bet he was. He'd have made it, too, if it wasn't for me. You seen that, Cartwright? You seen this murder and Welp make his escape? You think he's innocent now? Mr. Murdoch, you better come along with me. As soon as I lock him up, you can give me your full story. Come on. I, 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 I tried, Jamie. I, I really tried. You come along, too, Junior. Come on. You tried, Junior. The ring we both did. How'd it go today? Not too good, I'm afraid. How's the hand? It's coming along real good. The sheriff can't be finding any more of that marked money? Oh. Well, Jamie Rand tried to escape jail tonight. Well, it sure doesn't do him any good. Makes me wonder if I ain't been wrong about him all along. You're changing your mind, huh? Yeah, I reckon I am. I guess it's about time I started doing like Paul said, start thinking about the evidence and not so much about my feelings. That's kind of what a juryman's supposed to do. There's just one thing that bothers me. Adam, you do me a favor? Yeah, sure. What is it? I, I gotta know for sure. I gotta know for certain that Olson recognized Jamie Rand that night and not just thought he did. Well, Sheriff Coffey said they tested his eyes in court. No, well, they gave him a printed page of small print to read and he read it right off, but that ain't the same as recognizing a man in the dark and from a distance, especially when you're in shock from seeing your only brother shot down right before your own eyes. See what you're getting at. What would you like me to do? I'd like for you to go out there and talk to him. Go out there while he's calm and collected and talk to him. Check on him. Make sure, Adam. I gotta know absolutely sure. Why haven't you talked to him yourself? Well, I thought about it, but the judge said we jurymen are not supposed to talk to anybody about the case except in the jury room. But I I figured you being my brother, you know. I understand. All right, Missouri Mule. I'll talk to him. It's nice and dark tonight, too. I'll find out just how good his eyes really are. Well, that'll take care of the paperwork. Now, if you just sign this report, Mr. Murdoch. Thank you very much. Nothing of it. Just happened to be in the right place at the right time. Say, Sheriff, 
Did you catch the look on Cartwright's face when he realized Wren was trying to escape? <laughs> you know, Wren, I think the jury will finally reach a verdict of guilty tomorrow. You got a dirty soul, ain't you, Murdoch? A dirty, vicious soul. And you got the devil's taste for pushing misery on those that can't fight back. You talk about me killing. You got your own special way of murdering. Listen, if I had killed ten times over, I wouldn't trade my soul for yours. I don't have to take that from you, Ray. Mr. Murdoch, I'm gonna have to ask you to leave. I don't allow nobody badgering my prisoner. Uh, just remember something, Sheriff. He wouldn't be your prisoner no more if it wasn't for me. Now, that sort of makes him my prisoner, too, doesn't it? Hmm? Yeah. Hey, Sheriff. Yeah? Is that true, what he said? I mean, about, about the jury coming in with a verdict tomorrow? I don't know. It wouldn't surprise me none. After all, Hoss Cartwright was the only juryman that was holding out for you, and you had to go and pull this foolish jailbreak right in front of him. Well, it's like I've said. There's some people born lucky. No rhyme, no reason. Just born lucky. And there's others that have trouble dribbling on them all their lives, like... like sand in an hourglass. Dribbling down and piling up. Now, now, now don't get too far down in the dumps, Jamie. I mean, after all, we don't know for sure if Hoss is going to change his mind. Hey, badge man, where's that supper you was gonna bring us, huh? Yeah, yeah, we're, we're, we're hungry. That's right. You get it, boys, just as soon as my deputy gets back. Mr. Olson? Uh, over here. Here we go. I just came by to pay my respects. I'm sorry about your brother. Glad to see you, Adam. Come on in. I'll light up the oil lamp. Yeah, I didn't see your light when I rode up. I thought maybe you were asleep. Don't burn the lamp much, Adam. Oil costs money. Besides, I got eyes like a cat. Yeah, so I just found out. Hey, won't you sit down, Adam? Thanks. Your horse tell you to come out here. Yes, Yalmer, as a matter of fact, he did. I just got back in town and we were talking about it and he's still kind of concerned about the testimony at the trial, you know, as to whether or not you saw what you said you saw and well, we talked and I agreed to come over and maybe, you know, go over it with you once more, real careful like, and maybe help him make up his mind. Well, you can see for yourself what good eyes I've got. Yeah, <laughs> sure gave me a start out there in the dark. Well, if you went back and told that the horse, wouldn't that satisfy him? Yeah, maybe. Well, then Horse could vote with the jury and then they could bring in a verdict of guilty against Jamie Wren. Yeah, but I can't tell Horse how to vote. Oh, I know that, Adam. All I'm looking for is a way to end it once and for all. First, I, I wanted to see Wren hung for what he did. I wanted vengeance for my brother. Adam, maybe the jury could just give Jamie a life sentence. Well, of course, the jury doesn't determine the sentence. It'll be up to the judge. But I don't know. Crane's kind of got his hands tied. Jury comes in with a guilty verdict. I feel pretty sure you'll sentence him to hang. So be it then. Tell me, Elmer, uh, where exactly was that box when Jamie took it? Oh, oh, I'll tell you all about it, Adam. You see, 
I was over sleeping in that bed, and my brother was over here. Yeah. And this noise woke me up, and I, I looked over, and I saw Jamie Wren at the fireplace, and uh, he'd found the money box behind the stone. Oh, well, my brother was scuffling with him. I jumped out of bed and ran to help him, and there was a shot. My brother, my brother fell. Jamie grabbed the money box and ran. How do you suppose he knew where the box was hidden? Oh, folks around here know we are frugal, Adam. Uh, they figure we got a hoard hidden someplace, and well, where else in here would you hide a money box up in the fireplace? Yeah, you're right. That's a nice one, too. As a matter of fact, you and your brother did a very good job in this place. My brother didn't help me. I did it all by myself, this whole place with my own hands. My brother wasn't very good with tools, Adam. Yeah, I understand. This whole thing's been a sorrowful mess. Yeah, she sure has. Oh, Adam. Um, tell me. Jamie Wren, after they hang him, what then? Boy comes from a poor family. End up on Boot Hill, I suppose. Well, Adam, I want, I want to make a contribution. to it that Jamie gets a headstone. Very generous of you, Elmer. Well, thanks for your time. I'm sorry about your brother. Uh, better be getting along. Oh, I'll walk you out, Adam. Hey, Almer, it's uh, kind of a long ride back, and all that talk made me thirsty. I think I'll have some of your well water. Oh, Adam, uh, I got a fresh bucket in the house. Uh, I'll go get it. Well, don't trouble yourself. The well's right here. Wait a minute, Adam. You, you're my guest. Uh, please, let me. Oh, thanks, y'all. Uh, got a loose stone there. You ought to get that fixed. Thanks. Good night. The whole thing was kind of accidental. Anyway, when I rode off, all the pieces sort of fell together, and I decided to double back. And I found him there with the money. 
What do you got to say for yourself, Mr. Olson? Well, my brother was always wanting to spend our money, buy land. Money is too precious to squander like that. We argued and argued and I killed him. But what did you want to try to throw the blame on Jamie Wren for? Because he was the easiest one, always getting into trouble, sassing people. Everybody knew he was no good. Who'd ever think he was innocent? Sorry I put that doll in your pocket, horse. I just had to do it. I, I wanted him to think you was mixed up in it. Mr. Olson, I don't understand, huh? How could you let an innocent man die for a crime you'd committed? Well, it was the law said he had to die, not me. I was willing to chip in for a headstone for him. That's mighty big of you. Would you listen to that now? Would you listen to that? Well, badge man, you're gonna let me out of here? You're gonna keep me cooped up in this stinking hole all night long? Now you take it easy, Jamie. Come on, Olsen. You got the wrong man in here. Come on, let me out of here. Yes, sir, badge man. You keep that badge polished. Who knows? Someday he might even make U.S. Marshal, huh? Well, you're a big man, Cartwright. Yeah. You really are a big man. That Ralph Black was stealing chickens, and he'll probably want a jury trial, too. Where in the world am I going to get anybody to sit on a jury for a thing? Hey, you fellas could help me out. Just this once, huh? It pays a dollar a day. All you have to do is sit down. <laughs> 